Another thing you talked about was your treasure map exercise. Can you share that with us? Sure. So the way that that works is, again, because of what we're trying to do to, to bring up those things that people really want to experience or want to do in their lives. And people either A, don't take the time to think about those things ever, never really contemplate what those things are um, for the reasons we just talked about. Like maybe they're doing what they're doing in their life because of societal pressures, or maybe their family wanted them to pursue a career or a lifestyle or something. Or maybe they had dreams and goals that they just kind of suppressed and forgot about. And we want to bring those to the surface. We want to like bring those back. Um, and this is the way we do that minus the near-death experiences. We have people imagine that their doctor just called and bad news, they got the test results were back and, uh, and they've only got a year left to live. And then we ask people to write out what are the 10 things they would absolutely insist on doing in that last year that they know that they didn't do, they would have a major amount of regrets about. And after they write those things down, we give people some time to really contemplate that. Things that you could really do in a year. Um, after they write those things down, we ask people to then look at their list and say, how many of those things are you currently working on now? And it's almost always none, which is just crazy. You know, like, again, these are the, these things that are the most important things that you absolutely would do but you're not even, they're not even getting planned. <laughs> you know, this is how these things wind up going from yep. today ideas to like 20 years from now. You're like, oh my gosh, what happened to that thing? I just, yep. I thought I would do it later and I thought I'd always have more time. And then something happened and now I don't have time. And uh, yeah, that's really a big part of the, the, the exercise. We actually break it into multiple stages though. After that, we go down to like a 30 day kind of version of it. And then the right. doctor, by the way, this is a very, very terrible doctor. <laughs> so he calls <laughs> again and says, Hey guys, I did, I totally read this wrong. I had it upside said, down. I'm not sure. Oh, that's but, funny. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's actually one day you have left and what would you do then? And, and, you know, you can just start taking steps towards those things and start removing end of life regrets. Um, and this is right. something that I've done and Bridget have, has done very actively, especially over the last decade. And mm -hmm. uh, it's really cool because, again, as, it, as you evolve, you know, every year or two or three, you're looking back on, wow, I've checked a lot of things off that I no longer have to worry about the regrets for, you know, because I did those things. And it's, it's empowering. It's empowering to know that you can actually do that because i think a lot of people probably don't think they can do that until they try it yeah and, and that's kind of why it's like different than like a bucket list or something in, in my opinion it's because it's you know say you have one day left to live the it's not going to be going to the pyramids you know it's going to be like you know maybe it's forgiving someone that you've been wanting to forgive or maybe it's calling your mom or maybe it's like spending time you know on the beach or whatever it is for you you know, like those are the things that should be on your to do list today and not, you know, in some far away thing. Because you know, if you look at like the top regrets of the dying, like one of them is, is not keeping in touch with your friends, right? And that's a very easy, free thing to do. Um, so if you were on your deathbed and you were like, I'm going to reach out to people, like you waited too long, you know, like you can do that stuff today and like make sure that you don't have that regret later. Yeah. And that's really, I think, um, as far as like the tools we created, you know, one of the things that's really powerful for people that want to start to, you know, actually redesign their life is looking at that math, right? Looking at, okay, you know, I forgot, we, we use the memento mori chart, which is 76 squares, which is the average American lifespan right now, one year per square. And you have people fill, everyone fill out the how many squares they've lived. And then you can see how many you have left if you live to be the average lifespan, right? So once you look at it like that, and you see those boxes left in a chart, and then you start doing the math on things like, well, I see my parents once a year, is that enough? I'm only going to see them X amount of times. You know, my kids are you know, I've got a four-year-old and a two-year-old. I've got X amount of years with them in the house. You know, how how many of those years am I going to take them on a summer camping trip or am I going to do X or Y? And as soon as you look at things like that, our time that in our heads when we don't think about is seems to be like endless, all of a sudden becomes finite. And then we, we get some like actual urgency to actually start doing those things. And especially when I think that matters too with the smaller things like if you tell yourself, if you look at some of these exercise results and you say, wow, I really do 
regret not being in nature more and I want to spend more time in nature, but I live in the city and I have a job in a cubicle all day. How can I fix that? You know, so you have to like start making those changes because you can't just get it all in like in one week a year. I'm going to go camping and I'm good. That's not going to solve the problem. Yeah. I mean, that exact situation happened to me. I was like, uh, I had lived in the city for so long and, and I liked it, but I was always like, man, I want to like learn how to surf. I want to like learn how to like, you know, I want to go paddle boarding and like I want to be in nature. And, you know, after doing these exercises and going through a lot of like negative experiences in my life, like I ended up just like, I ended up just moving and like, you know, of course my place is like smaller than probably what I can get in another part of the city. But, but this like makes me happier just to like be in nature. And like now I don't have that like thought of like, what if I could do this? You know, you got to take away those thoughts. Like you can do it. Yeah. I, I did something similar when my dad actually moved to Mexico. I actually moved to the beach. I'd always wanted, I always said I was going to move to the beach when I was a kid. And then after that situation with my dad, I literally just thought, when, what am I waiting for? Like, why, why do I live by my high school that I grew up in? I have nothing really keeping me there. So I moved and it literally changed my life. It absolutely 100% changed my life in so many ways. And it wasn't like it cost more. I got roommates, got a cheap apartment, found a place, moved there. And it changed everything in my life. And I think that you know people take those steps once. That's the proof point of, wow, you know that it can be done and they can do it. And really all of the stories that Bridget and I share in the book you know, we, we like to say it in a way that's, you know, book isn't about us and our stories are just proof that anyone can do it. The book is about everyone else. It's about, you know, what are you doing with your life and hopefully how can we help make that better? 